Yeah, so the metabolic side effects of clozapine and other uh, atypical antipsychotics can uh, be a, a big barrier to long-term usage. They increase your risk of uh, diabetes, uh, weight gain, uh, and obesity. And um, there, are, there are some strategies to try to mitigate this risk. And I believe there's some new data out there that uh, prophylactic use of metformin can reduce the development uh, or the risk of weight gain. I believe this data comes from lanzapine, but uh, may be generalizable to other medications like clozapine. Uh, however, it is a, uh, it is a difficult uh, problem um, without a very uh, clear strategy that would work for, for all patients who take these medications, unfortunately. I don't think it's necessarily a barrier to clozapine because it's not specific to clozapine. Um, we do see these metabolic side effects um, in um, pretty much all of the second generation agents, uh, but particularly in things like olanzapine. But I think the other side effects um, of clozapine that are more unique to it um, do present a barrier. They are reversible in some uh, side effects. So for example, in myocarditis, um, the risk of myocarditis is uh, probably highest in the initiation phase when you're um, starting someone on clozapine. Um, and so in the first few months, um, we typically uh, do routine testing of cardiac markers and EKGs. And often those tests will um, reflect uh, a, uh, uh, an emerging or the developing myocarditis even before the patients develop symptoms, uh, such as chest pain. And in those cases, um, there are um, papers out there that have shown that pausing or stopping clozapine does um, mitigate or, or reverse the um, development of myocarditis. And in some cases, uh, clinicians have successfully prevented myocarditis in these situations and then later rechallenged patients on clozapine without the development of myocarditis. Uh, and so it is possible that even if uh, a patient uh, needs to stop or pause clozapine because of the risk of myocarditis, um, there is a protocol to getting them back on clozapine. Um, and this is important because these patients usually have failed um, many other antipsychotics, so they, they really um, are left with very little choice. Um, um, but if they respond well to clozapine, then you know, it's, I think it's fortunate that we now have the data and uh, uh, a developing protocol to get them back on clozapine.